first got to, became interested in comics when I was uh, in the early 1980s, when I was what, six, seven, eight, that kind of thing, uh, where I would go down to Anderson's and spend my pocket money with the rest of the pocket money brigade on the Beano. My brother was buying smash hits because he was cooler and four years older than me. A few number of years later, my mum ran a, a sort of an antique come junk stall in um, a nearby market town. And there I found um, lots of annuals, girls' annuals, uh, things like Mandy and Bunty, and my favourite, which was blue jeans, which I still like now. Um, and it, they're very dated, as they would be, but it's all about pop and love and boyfriends and things, Jackie particularly. But some of them contained some fabulous hidden gems, which were really nasty stories. Um, when I met my best friend Heidi when I was 14, she also loved them too. And we'd spend quite a long time looking through her sister's old annuals. And we had the same annuals. And we used to get our pens out and deface the annuals and make all the boys look like women. Um, I remember my dad once saying to me, why don't you just write something nice? And I said, well, I am writing something nice. I'm writing what I want to write. Morrissey sings in panic. He sings, the music that they constantly play says nothing to me about my life. So the stories in, in, in blue jeans and, you know, Jackie and heartthrobs and this, that meant nothing to me. I was a miserable kid. Yeah. I'm not sure that it could be... I don't think it's accurate to say that, that my interest in, you know, the darker side of human nature comes from a dark place, per se, because I don't think that I have a particularly hidden dark place. Not that I'm prepared to share, anyway. Um, I think that it comes from being realistic. Um, and acknowledging all the facets of life, um, you know, love and stuff, or, or whether it's more kind of disappointment, regret, sorrow, anger, bitterness, all of those things all meld together, and that's what life is. But at that, uh, at that time, period of time in my life, I felt like I'd found my people, that somebody actually understood. My, I was talking to another friend about this, and she told me about a comic called Misty, that her mum used to buy her and then stopped because she kept having nightmares. This is true. And uh, I thought, I've got, I've got to have this, I've got to see it. So I found it. Um, I think, you know, fundamentally, the discovery of Misty gave me a very clear direction um, for where I would want to go with my, my own uh, comic writing. And the graphic format was very appealing to me because I'm very interested in social history. Um, and um, and nostalgia and hauntology, if you will, and in a sense, those misty comics they are they do have elements of hauntology in them. Um, and on discussion with the creator of Misty, Pat Mills of 2000 AD, Judge Dredd, Martial Law, etc., slain fame. Um, he said, no, we, we just sat around in the 70s and we went to the pub and like, oh, what should we write about? They'd have a few drinks. They'd write this kind of dark story, and and it, and it worked. It wasn't overthought, but on analysis, you can see, that, uh, and he agreed with me when I put this to him, that there are reflections of the zeitgeist within those comic, comic scripts. And that's what I tried to do when I wrote mine, um, and reflections of my own life. 